Hey peeps, what's up? Here we have another NCCN guideline review. This one's going to be on endometrial cancer, early stage, and adjuvant treatment. So let's get started. Okay, so here we have the first page of, let's get the pointer, the early stage algorithm. So if you have disease confined to the uterus, you have two options, primary surgery or someone who's not suitable for primary surgery. Today, we're going to primarily focus on surgical staging in someone who's going to get primary surgery. We'll save fertility sparing and uh, not suitable for the next time. So let's get into it. Okay. Under surgical staging, you have GOG-33, which basically set the stage for surgical staging in endometrial cancer. Previously, as you know, we were doing clinical staging. And then we have LACE and LAP2, which are um, our two trials to say that it's okay to do MIS surgery in endometrial cancer. And then you also have uh, lymph node dissection. So Mayo criteria, FIRES trial, and Centaur will be uh, kind of our mainstay studies on lymph node dissection um, when we're talking about staging. Let's start with GOG-33. So uh, the shift to surgical staging was due in part to GOG-33. It evaluated 621 patients with clinical stage 1 endometrial cancer. All of them underwent standard surgical staging, which included a TAH, BSO, pelvic and periodic lymph node dissection, and uh, it looked at pathologic features including histology, grade, depth of invasion, lymphovascular space invasion, and extrauterine involvement. These were all examined to determine the risk of lymph node mets and extrauterine involvement. So this study uh, found that clinically stage 1 patients, um, about 5 to 9 percent were upstaged with surgery. So 9% of patients with clinical stage one disease had pelvic disease, 6% had periodic spread, 5% had spread to the adnexa, and 6% had extra uterine disease. This study also showed that there were some pathologic risk factors that could benefit from adjuvant therapy in these patients. And so later down the line, we'll talk about GOG-99 and maybe some of these high intermediate risk criteria. Okay, the next two trials, LAP2 and LACE, are both trials that looked at minimally invasive surgery versus open surgery in endometrial cancer. So LAP2 was first, it was in 2012. It had uh, 1,696 patients who got laparoscopy and 920 patients who were randomized to laparotomy. Overall, laparoscopy was completed in 74% of the patients, uh, and laparoscopy was associated with fewer post-op complications, shorter hospitalization, longer OR time, lower rate of lymph node sampling, and then equivalent staging for advanced stage patients. The follow-up was about 95 months and suggested no statistically significant increase in the rate of recurrence and no change in overall survival. The LACE trial was very similar in 2017. It had similar findings where disease-free survival was equivalent and overall survival was the same. And so, therefore, minimally invasive surgery became the gold standard in endometrial cancer. Last but not least, we'll talk about lymph node dissection and endometrial cancer. So, Mayo criteria is an intraoperative um, assessment. And it looks at grade, myometrial invasion, and then size. So grade 1 or 2, myometrial invasion less than 50%, and tumor size less than 2 centimeters. Um, The Mayo study was an observational study of 328 patients. And patients who met all of these criteria, so grade 1 or 2, less than 50%, tumor size less than 2%, none of the patients had positive lymph node mets. So this is something that you can use intraoperatively uh, if you're not using sentinel lymph nodes or if the patient doesn't map to say whether or not um, you would do lymph nodes or not. I would say since we, um, since the invention of lymph node dissection, we don't use Mayo criteria as often, but um, you can have this in your back pocket. But Two studies that are pertinent for lymph node dissection, sentinel lymph node dissections, are the FIRES trial and the Centaur trial. 
So the FIRES trial was a validation study. All patients had a sentinel lymph node mapping and dissection, followed by then a full pelvic lymphadenectomy with or without periodic lymphadenectomy. And the sentinel lymph node mapping had a very high sensitivity uh, as well as negative predictive value. Sensitivity was 97%, as you can see here, and then a false negative rate of 3%. And then Centaur was a prospective co go excuse me cohort study, um, and the the interesting thing about the Centaur trial, or why I'm highlighting it here, is because it included high risk subtypes of endometrial cancers. So you can use this to support using um, sentinel lymph node mapping in high risk subtypes. And the sensitivity was still very high at 96% and then a negative predictive value of 99%. So definitely a viable option for high-risk subtypes of endometrial cancer. And that is just a quick snippet of early stage endometrial cancer and surgical staging trials. We'll hit all these next time. Please uh, leave some comments. Let me know if you liked it. I would definitely recommend reading these trials and taking all the nuggets you can out of them. They're excellent um, and they're paramount to why we do what we do. Uh, and let me know if you learn anything that I didn't include here. Okay, hope you have a great day.